Ah, Foxy. That aura of confidence tells me you've not been idle since last we met. I hope I've read you aright, for I've a task that requires the attention of a capable adventurer. Might that adventurer be you? Good to hear. Then I shall lay before you the sorry tale. You will have heard rumors of the abductions. I, citizens have been disappearing from every corner of Limsalam and Sa, as if plucked from the face of Hydaelyn, Boots, and all, by an unseen hand. And what's this got to do with Summerford Farms, you might ask? Well, that remains to be seen, but it seems a collection of right unsavory fellows with azure tattooed faces has been creeping up to the edges of the fields and spying on my yeoman. Now, I doubt anyone would enjoy being scrutinized by such savages at the best of times, but the farmhands are convinced that they're the kidnappers of rumor, come for their hides. Needless to say, they're beside Emsolves with worry, and their work suffering for it which is the very last thing I need when my old crewmen are still getting used to their new jobs. Tis a struggle to get them to leave the farmhouse of a morning. That is, as they say, where you come in. Would you be willing to investigate these tattooed thugs for me? Good lass. The sooner we get to the bottom of this, the sooner this place will start to resemble a working farm again. I suggest you begin by having a look around Cezanne Grotto. If reports are to be believed, our unwelcome visitors have occupied the place. Be careful, though, Foxy, I couldn't say for sure what manner of miscreants we're dealing with here. If they are the kidnappers, well, just be on your guard, alright? Mama. I have gathered what information I could concerning the beast that young sired bade you slay. The tales name this creature Kujita. Those who have witnessed Kujita in the terrifying flesh also call him the Stampeding Mountain, such as his immense size and bulk. Again, I will not seek to dissuade you from claiming vengeance for the boy's parents. In fact, I encourage it. But to topple this lumbering colossus, you must first become his equal in strength and ferocity. As a single step towards that distant goal, I send you to blind iron mines. We have had word that folk are falling prey to the claws of the local Gallegos. It is your task to protect the weak from these unruly creatures. Learn to channel the rage inside you, and let your axe blade sing in righteous slaughter.
I am the waves that bear. I am the winds that guide. I am the evening stars. I am the morning sky. I am born of the sea, and there shall I die. Thus reads the sailor's requiem, carved into yonder stone. Such words well describe the manner in which the citizens of Limsa Luminsa live their lives. It is both a litany against misfortune for those out on the waves, and a prayer that the souls of those who perish on land might find their way back to the sea. Ah, you are the adventurer I've seen around Summerford Farms. I thought myself on the trail of the kidnappers, but it would seem I have missed my mark. Or perhaps not. As I suspected, the etheric disturbance here is no natural occurrence. Nor is it a coincidence that the two of us should come here in search of those responsible for the disappearances, only to be attacked. But who stands to benefit from the keeping of this secret? Oh, such thoughts must wait. Let us attend to the task at hand, unpleasant though it be.
crystal bearer. I am Hydaelyn, all made one. A light there once was that shone throughout this realm, yet it hath since grown dim. And as it hath faltered, so hath darkness risen up in its stead, presaging an end to life. For the sake of all, I beseech thee, deliver us from this fate. The power to banish the darkness dwelleth in the crystals of light. Journey forth and lay claim to them. Awake again, are we? Aha! The poor creature's fury was kindled with cruel forethought. See this blade? I found it in the Gubu's back. I have seen knives of this kind before. They are most commonly used for the cutting of rope. It would appear our culprits are seafaring men of some persuasion. Piratical being the most probable. In any event, you seem much recovered from your sudden... affliction. I confess, I was rather taken aback when you collapsed at the very moment of our victory. Mayhap a surfeit of ether? I beg your pardon. A towering crystal. I'm sure I don't... Oh! Well, well. This has been a day of unexpected revelations. I must continue my investigation. In the meantime, I suggest you deliver this knife to your patron, along with a warning concerning the pirate's probable involvement in this murky business. The days ahead promise little rest, I fear. May our paths cross again, under the light of the crystal. Foxy. Right glad am I to see you safely returned. 
My lads were all gabbing about here in what sounded like all seven hells breaking loose near the grotto, and I feared I'd sent you to your death. If you were in the middle of that commotion, I hope it yielded something of interest. I'd hate to think you'd risk your life for naught. A blade pulled from the back of a creature you slew at the cave, eh? I, I'd agree that such a knife would be part of any seafaring man's kit. I'm starting to think that these ruffians are pirates, come to lure my farm hands back to a life of plunder. Chances are, they didn't take kindly to your appearance on their doorstep, and set a maddened kubo on you. I, the pirates have been adding to their numbers of late. I'd best warn the lads and lasses in my employ to be on guard against their schemes. You met someone else at the grotto? A woman with a strange contraption? Ah, Wajdala. She's been in Limsa Lamansa for a good while now. Her studies of the ether often bring her out to Summerford, so her presence at the grotto is hardly unusual. She's an odd-looking lass, I grant you, but she's not the kind to associate with kidnappers. You may take my word for that. Where trust should be lacking is in those yeomen of mine who have yet to wholly relinquish their pirate pasts. The temptation to return to the free and easy life of a buccaneer may prove too strong to resist. You have my thanks, Foxy. If it weren't for the efforts of stalwart adventurers like yourself, this farm would be in a far worse state than it is. Just you keep on lending your talents to those in need, eh? Help bring Limsa the brighter future she deserves. That sea sloth's friend and his lot never around when there's work to be done. I'd sooner hire you for the sake of getting things done, but then the rapscallions would never learn. Round them up and let them know that Stalewern would like a word. And don't take no for an answer. work. Ha. Huh? Can't work when me hands are full lipped in this mug. Ya yeah, know, I'd wager me last gill yet never guess what I'm drinking. Well, you're right about the swill part. I reckon it might be worth a day o doing stale worms chores if it'll afford me a taste o proper grog. Axes were made for splitting skulls, not stumps. You know what I did in my sailing days? You bet your bosom I did, lass. I, those were the days. I reckon now I'll have to be satisfied talking my axe to the trees.
So, Stalewern sent you. And what do you reckon I say to that? Damn right. Didn't get where I am by talking guff from any glorified gardeners. But I suppose I could see what he wants to get him off my back. I'm Sren. You the old man's errand girl, now. Tell my dear old captain not to wet his britches. I'll be along. Oh, and just so we're clear I don't care for landlubbers. Go find the chocobo you rode in on, and ride on out. How am I supposed to work on an empty stomach? Go on, have a guess at what I had for breakfast. Why gods, how do you know? It's my breath, ain't it? It probably smells as wooden as the food tasted. But I know why you're here. I just as soon get some real food in me, but I ain't one to reject a summons from the captain. You continue to impress, lass. All but Sren are accounted for. It's no fault of yours he squirmed out. I've let that worm wriggle through my fingers more times than I can count. But rest assured, the next time I see him, I'll put him squarely in the dirt, where all such worms belong. Pains me to say, but all the gill in the world can't buy loyalty. There are some, like you, who can be trusted. But then there are others. Until now, I've had no choice but to rely on that charlatan Sren, even though I am full aware he's been doing shady deals behind my back. More than once I've heard tell of improper trading with goblins. I wouldn't be the least surprised if that were happening right now. Not a bell ago, a sack of oranges vanished, as did Sren. I want you to find and confront the bastard for me, Foxy. I'm sure there's wrongdoing afoot, so be sure to doubt anything that comes out of his mouth. What's this now? Stalewern sent you for the oranges. Huh. So the old bugger had known all this time. Arg, 
what does it matter anyway? Listen, you're one of those goody-goody adventurer types, right? Go rescue me mates from those double-dealing goblins. They're just over yonder by the bonfire. and sent you. Ha! Huh? The way he flew out of here, I was sure he'd sold us down the river. If you hadn't come, my dodo would have been cooked. MMM. Cooked dodo. I owe you one. Would have gotten away myself if not for Sprinship and me aside. You saved me mates, and for that, I owe you. I suppose I should be ashamed I couldn't clean up my own mess. But a pirate knows no shame. I've no qualms about going back on my word. I'm only giving you the sack cause I like the cut of your jib. Take it to Asim, and send him my regards. What have we here? A delivery from Summerford Farms, and as scheduled. Ha! Huh? There's a first time for everything. Well, look at that. Not a single one missing, either. About the only things not here are those bagmen, and I don't miss them one bit. Here's Stalewern's payment in full. With you, I can trust it'll reach him. Back in one piece. That's a relief. How did you fare, Foxy? Ah, this is what I was aiming for. Looks to be all I was owed, alright. Though, I'd be telling you false if I claimed I had not held out more hope for Sprint. I was even willing to overlook the skimmin off the top, but to sell us all short in favor of those godsforsaken goblins. You'd do well to mind yourself around that two-gill cheat. If he'd leave his own mates for dead, there's no telling what he'd do to you. Blast, at this rate, the crops will never be ready for harvest. If only we had black loam. Just a bit could send our stock soaring. I'll bet Rotwitten knows where you might find some. Perhaps you might pay her a visit in the orchard.
That Gurkhan's got a head of cabbage if he thinks I'm fetching him any black loam. But if you dare to pinch some from the cook pot, then be my guest. Just mind you don't get trampled upon by the aurochs that dwell there. Once you've three bushels worth, take the black loam to Pruel at Tiller's rest. He'll know what to do. Even the weeds wither and die in this desolate dirt. But a bit of this black loam ought to change all that. I haven't seen any in ages. Gathering black loams not for the weak of will, nor the weak of stomach, eh. Ha ha ha. Oh, don't tell me Gurkhan and Rotwitten neglected to mention where black loam comes from. Well. Surely you figured it out on your own from the cloying stench. It comes from the Aurochs lair, of all places. Ahem, well, why dwell on who misled whom about what? What matters is that your efforts have brought us the black loam, and we can expect a bountiful harvest as a result. Thank you.
Welcome back, Mama. Your actions have saved many from needless injury and anguish. But though your efforts are to be commended, there is yet much work to be done. Kyujita, the object of your vengeance, has trampled a farmer's wagon as he thundered through the lands of Tiller's rest. The footsteps spilled. From the overturned wain have attracted all manner of hungry predators. Without produce for the market, the farmers will surely suffer for coin this season. Your duty is thus clear, put down these rapacious scavengers and preserve the cargo. Once again, your capacity for carnage has been tested and proven. The creatures you defeated, however, were merely some of the many base scavengers that subsist on the scraps left in the wake of Kyujita's rampages. To face Kyujita himself, you yet require far more training. But do not despair, Mama. As Axie Master and fellow Marauder, this I swear, I will not rest until I have taught you how to wring every last ounce of power from your weapon, until the blade of your axe can slice cleanly through the thickest hide, the most knotted muscle, the densest bone. This menace will fall by your hand. You may find yourself drawn to explore the possibilities offered by other disciplines and guilds. These distractions are inevitable, and, perhaps, necessary. But I urge you to soon return to the path of the Marauder. I do not wish your edge to dull just as you begin to show such potential. Fare you well, Mama. <laughs> 